How do? Two things happening today. One of them is a base ramp. If you don't know what that is, hang on. The second is a zero fret, just because it's interesting. Yes, at the end of the last video, I was talking about attaching strings for both ends, but I kind of want to do the fretting in between. Now, I'll be honest, I was just going to do the fretting off camera because you've all seen fretting before, but zero frets are something that's just a little bit more interesting, maybe something that you've not seen very often before. So we're going to have a look at that. If you want to jump straight to that, look at the chapters that are in the description and you can skip straight to that bit. First off, though, we're going to look at base ramps. What is a bass ramp? I hear you cry. It's a section in between the pickups. So it goes in between here and it's the same material as the fretboard. So it feels like you're playing on the fretboard. Um, I find quite often when I'm playing bass, I rest my thumb on the top of the fretboard and I quite often play here. Some people will do it on the top of the pickups. Giving a section in between the pickups just gives extra thumb placement an extra feel underneath. It genuinely means you play a little bit lighter. Fairly simple thing to do. Let's just jump in and get that cracked off. Okay, so this is a chunk of wood. It's come off the fretboard, so it's even got the same slope automatically done. If you don't have that, or you want to put this on afterwards as a completely separate guitar, try and find a piece of wood that matches, if nothing else, for feel. This is a lot about feel. Um, so we want to get something that then, when you put it in place, is going to run in line with that fretboard. It wants to feel like the fretboard. Um, I also have a spare piece here, just in case the client decides he wants something there as well. So once we've fitted this, he can then see what it really looks like and can decide either before we finished or afterwards that actually he wants another piece in the middle there. That's totally up to him, set aside, ready to go. Take a knife and I'm gonna mark off where that section goes there and that section goes there. Once I've made a, a nick at the top and bottom of each of those, obviously corresponding in line with that pickup, um, we can then just draw a straight line on. Again, I'm going to just do that with a knife. And then basically cut that out. So with that in the right place, it's about half a mil each side too big. Um, so we can trim that down flush to the cavity itself in a minute. Um, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to actually screw this down just in case in the future uh, he wants this raising or lowering. We can sort that out afterwards. It's not a big deal. You effectively mount it like a pickup in that instance. Uh, so you put it with some springs underneath so you can raise it and lower it if that's what you want. As it is, we want it the same height as the fretboard. So that's what we're going to stick with today. But screwing it down rather than gluing it down gives us options later. So with this in place in the correct position, uh, I want to put the screw holes in line with the, the top and bottom strings, um, just because I think that's going to be neater. I'm just going to draw a line on there and a line along there. So that's where our screws want to go in. And I'm just going to use some of these nice round top They'll just match the pickup screws. So again, just line that up, get that in the right place. Once we know it is in the right place, then we can mark off exactly where those holes need to be and then we'll pre-drill little pilot holes in. Thank you. 
Right, now instead of get the big nasty router out that might chip off a corner or something silly like that, just going to get a nice sharp chisel and just plane down that edge to get it to match the pickup cavity. And there we have one base ramp. Easy to pluck on, easy to rest your thumb on, extra options. It might just help with your style of playing. Now, here's a little trick. If you fancy trying a bass ramp, why don't you make one and then just stick it onto your current bass using the masking tape and super glue trick. It'll stay there for pretty much as long as you want it to. You can try it out, you can see what it feels like, you can decide whether you like it or not. If you do, then make it a bit more permanent. Maybe screw it in. If you don't, you take it off, you've made no difference to the guitar, you go back to how it was before. Maybe worth giving it a try. Okay, so now we get to talk about frets and fret wire. So firstly, we're using some fairly narrow gauge fret wire for this. This is two mil fret wire. Most people, most bases you buy in the shops have big fat chunky frets on them. There's no real need for that. It's not a necessary thing. It's a personal choice as it is in the guitar building world as well. Uh, look at Lee Sklar's P bass, most recorded bass in history, mandolin fret wire. Again, it genuinely gives you a lighter feel while you're playing with those smaller frets. It's exactly the same theories that go behind all the guitar building world as well. Uh, so I'm just going to refresh all of the fret slots that are in here, make sure they're all clean and to the correct depth. Snip the wire off at the correct sizes, tap them in, level them, polish them, exactly the same as you would with every other guitar. The difference being with this one, we're going to have a zero fret, which I'm going to do after all of the rest of the fret work. So we'll talk about that in a second. There we go, frets in, shiny and smooth to the touch. How lovely. Exactly the same as you would do if you were just gonna put a nut at the end. But like we've said, we're not doing that. We're gonna use a zero fret. So I suppose the first question is, what's a zero fret? Really, really simple. We have first fret, second fret, third fret, etc. So the a zero fret literally just goes where the nut normally would. Now, why would you do that? So in this instance, the reason we want a zero fret is because we're using individual bridge pieces along here. Now to make sure that everything's ground, all of these strings need to touch at some point. So when you're playing open strings, at the far end, that zero fret connects all the strings together, meaning you're not gonna have any funny hums and grounding situations. The other option with this is to put some kind of copper tape underneath everything. But quite frankly, that's really ugly. Now, looking around, there's a bit of a debate on that zero fret, whether it wants to be a bigger fret than the rest of them to make sure it's high enough. I don't think you need to do that. Effectively, if you put a capo on your guitar, that first fret that all the strings touch becomes a zero fret. It's exactly the same situation. Does that fret need replacing to make it bigger? No, of course it doesn't. I am literally playing devil's advocate and playing the safe ball here by putting all the other frets in first and leveling them off. Then I'm just going to put that zero fret in. So it's gonna be a micron taller than the other frets. So we should have no issues whatsoever with fret buzz or any complications like that. 
So simply put the zero fret in exactly the same way you have all the other ones. I would just do it last. Then we still want to make a nut afterwards to hold the strings in place sideways, but height-wise, we're just set by that fret. With that it's done you can see how quick and simple that is and that will be set up for the correct height all the way through we're not filing uh, string slots down to precisely the right size it's already there you can see why on quite a few cheaper end guitars they use a zero fret because it's really quick and simple for that setup but don't confuse cheap and simple with secondary quality okay so just because an idea is used on a cheap thing doesn't mean it's a bad idea there's uses for everything in this instance we're primarily using it to ground all the strings that's why we're doing it but it's also a very quick simple way of sorting out string heights yes we're still going to need to make a nut to hold the strings in place and that's going to happen in the next video i promise we're going to be sorting out this headless headstock and sorting out all those bridge pieces so we can connect the strings up in between. If you like the sound of that, and if you like what's happening so far, well, leave a comment, smash the like button, click the subscribe button, ring the notification bell thingamajig, and well, everything else that's written on this little list down here. Okay, till next time, sharpen your tools, God bless. <laughs>